Good, happy Thursday morning, January 30th, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday morning, so let's begin. First step. Air man from New Hampshire killed in Afghanistan crash. Cause of crash under investigation. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. dream to become an Air Force pilot. So much so, he put it in writing in his 2007 Alvern High School yearbook. Not only did he accomplish that goal, he rose to the rank of captain, receiving awards and decorations, including the Air Force Commendation Medal. Tragically, the 30-year-old B-1 pilot was one of two U.S. service members killed Monday when their plane crashed in Afghanistan. To lose somebody, uh, two students... Within a week's time, uh, it's very tough on the community. The town and school still reeling over the loss of 2013 grad Katie Fine, a Navy veteran and police officer who died in the line of duty in Virginia last Thursday. Both she and FNUF were members of the junior ROTC program during their time at Alvern. This is when the counselors really step up and when the ROTC people, including the kids, really step up and support one another. According to the Department of Defense, the plane crash that claimed FNUF's life is under investigation, but officials say there is no indication that it was shot down. Neighbors in Hudson proudly display green lights outside their homes, a symbol of gratitude for the bravery displayed by so many, including FNUF and Thine. No other community honors their, their veterans and their uh, people who, who um, give their lives to this country uh, like Hudson does, and I think that's what makes this a real special town. A police procession carrying FNUF's body will pause here in front of the high school tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. There is a vigil scheduled to honor the life of Katie Fine. That should happen here tomorrow evening at 7.30. We're live in Hudson tonight. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Bo man reports being attacked in home by two men. Police search for white car seen leaving home. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Sharif LeClaire. officers from multiple agencies swarmed this neighborhood looking for three men who authorities say were involved in a home invasion at this home on Wood Hill Hooksett Road. The person was very shaken up. Thankfully they weren't injured more than any like just minor injuries. The homeowner was in a different building on his property when he noticed a strange car in his driveway. He walked into the house where he saw items had been moved and there were signs someone had broken in. He found two men in his bedroom who assaulted him. The two then ran to the car in the driveway where a third man was also waiting. A reverse 911 call was made to people who live in this area asking them to shelter in place. When we responded we were not sure if the suspects were still on scene. Uh, obviously safety is our number one priority. So until the scene was secure we want everybody to remain inside. Uh, it took us about half an hour to make sure the scene was secure. Authorities with state police, Dunbarton, Bradford, and Merrimack County Sheriff's Department searched the property for signs of the suspect, along with Bow Police dog, Roxy. You need the multiple agencies because this property is a very large property, mm -hmm. and the entire property needs to be secured. Um, so if there was anybody on scene, we need to make sure they were contained, mm -hmm. and that would allow us to, to locate them. 
Right now, police are looking for this car captured in home surveillance, believed to be a white Chevy Cobalt or Malibu with distinct black rims and a blue Bernie Sanders sticker on the trunk. That man was evaluated on the scene. He was okay and is expected to be just fine after such a scary ordeal. Police say he's just shaken up. Police are also asking that if you think you saw that vehicle or may have captured images of it on your home surveillance, to give them a call. Live in Bow, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire first responders say they're ready to deal with Cronora virus. State local agencies coordinate procedures. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. Responders in New Hampshire are now taking extra precautions to look out for signs of the coronavirus. Symptoms include fever, cough, and difficulty breathing. Right now, there's no vaccine to protect against the infection, which can spread from person to person. Typically, when we find someone who's um, coughing or has a fever, we take universal precautions for everybody. If a patient appears sick, first responders will put a mask on them and one on themselves, too. In these cases, we'll wear a mask, an N95 mask like this one here that... Um, takes out particulate from the air just to protect not only the patient but ourselves as well. First responders have also been told to ask questions about potential international travel and if so, where? Very much like uh, when we had the Ebola scare a few years ago, we were asking people if they had traveled to Africa, so along those lines. Officials say the virus has sickened thousands and killed more than 100 people in China. Five cases have been confirmed in the U.S. and more than 80 people have been tested. Right now, testing is being done by the CDC, which can take time. New Hampshire and other public health labs across the country will be able to do their own testing in about two weeks to deal with any other potential cases. We haven't seen a single person in Manchester or in Asheville that it even comes close to having this. And of course, it's flu season, so you know people are sick anyway, and, and you know, those things are out there. But we take precautions with everyone that we come in contact with. Now, first responders say if anyone has concerns about symptoms they're experiencing, call your health care provider first. Don't go to an emergency room. We're live in Manchester. Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man found guilty of manslaughter in woman's stabbing death. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. conditions can make your winters brutal. So we push the available all-wheel drive technology in the restyled Honda CRV to the absolute limit. Challenging the real-time all-wheel drive with intelligent control system against the worst elements imaginable. And proving why the CRV can push you through those cold winter months. Visit your Honda dealer and test drive the CRV today. Well, charged with first-degree murder, Deswan Jett faced the possibility of life without parole, but the jury convicted him on the lesser-included offense of manslaughter. The jury deliberated for about 12 hours over a three-day period. On the manslaughter conviction, he faces 10 to 30 years in prison. Jett is convicted of stabbing and killing Sabrina Galusha during what prosecutors described as a drug deal gone bad. Jett took the stand in his own defense, saying he was the victim of a robbery and was jumped, and that that stabbing happened in self-defense. Sentencing will happen here at Merrimack County Superior Court on February 19th. Live in Concord, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
free tiring teachers plan outdoor auditorium in memory of students who died of cancer. Middle school teachers say they still feel lost of students. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Cold and harsh conditions can make your winters brutal. So we push the available all-wheel drive technology in the we styled Honda CRV to the absolute limit. Challenging the real-time all-wheel drive with intelligent control system against the worst elements imaginable. And proving why the CRV can push you through those cold winter months. Visit your Honda dealer and test drive the CRV today. Together, Mrs. Allen and Mrs. DuPont have taught generations at West Running Brook Middle School in Derry. I'm very excited to have a job that I love. I feel so blessed and lucky. Despite decades of uplifting memories, their darkest times are hard to shake. Two of the hardest things I ever did was lose two students to cancer. Their loss just never goes away. This April marks six years since Alana Marcotte, an eighth grader, lost her battle with cancer. Sixteen years earlier, it was sixth grader Lauren Grella who grew up with Mrs. DuPont's daughter. I remember her, just this beautiful, dark-haired girl that just had a smile that lit up a room. Alana, she was probably the bravest girl I've ever met in my life. Both teachers are retiring this year. In lieu of a staff party, they reflected on two students who left an indelible impression. Lauren and Alana loved walking these halls, but with 600 students at the school, the classroom can feel a little cramped. So teachers thought, why not create a learning environment without walls? Plans are to transform an empty courtyard into a 40-seat outdoor auditorium. So this is like an aerial view. Just take them, taking them out of a classroom, you get a whole different perspective. It's like you hear the birds, you hear nature. We want something to remember these two beautiful souls with that will stay around for the next hundred years. To fund it, staff has organized a raffle. The grand prize, a $1,200 meat pack from Tuckaway Tavern. If you're interested in entering, payments can be mailed or dropped off at West Running Brook Middle School. Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man accused of beating public defender pleads not guilty. New defense attorney asks for explanation of charges. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. entered court this morning for arraignment on several charges that include first and second degree assault for allegedly attacking his former attorney during a meeting at the Valley Street Jail in October of last year. And my understanding from your lawyers is that uh, you wish the court to enter pleas of not guilty on all of them. Is that right? Holloway has also been indicted for several charges connected to a shooting at a Pelham church in 2019. This hearing was not connected to that incident that left two people wounded. Holloway's attorney did ask for some clarification on the assault charges he's facing. You know, I have my theories, but it's hard for me to say what he's actually facing because of the double jeopardy issue and the, the, and the, the fact that these may be alternative indictments. At this point, the two uh, lead first-degree assault charges, one for causing the subarachnoid hemorrhage and one for causing the broken nose, are, as of this moment, two assaults. Holloway is being held without bail. His attorneys did ask for an extension in filing what's called a notice of defense. 
meaning whether Holloway plans to claim anything from self-defense to insanity. As I indicated at the bench, we're still investigating the case. Uh, we would like to have 60 days to file any notice of affirmative defenses. The state did not object to that extension for the notice of defenses. Holloway's next court date is scheduled for March. Reporting live, I'm Mandy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire women say candidates must work to earn their vote. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Cold and harsh conditions can make your winters brutal. In 2020, New Hampshire women who often feel left behind in the political process are sending a message to those seeking their vote. I'm fighting for the kids. I'm fighting for my family. So folks like me don't just show up to you. You have to come to them. At a roundtable on women's empowerment in Manchester, activists say it's time for a fundamental shift in how issues that disproportionately affect working women, like paid family leave and income inequality, are addressed. We traditionally, I think, have had a way of making policy where we start off with everybody at the table. And then we say, you know, we really want to get something over the finish line. I'm really sorry, but we're going to get to you next time. Mm -hmm. And that just is not right anymore. And when it comes to righting those wrongs, some want the focus to be on both political parties. Within the Democratic Party, people of African descent has supported Democratic candidates for at least the last 50 years. And as an African people, we've yet to receive much in return, even with our last president. Two potential future first ladies were on hand for this discussion. Evelyn Yang, wife of Andrew Yang, and Diane Patrick, wife of Deval Patrick. He cares about people. He cares about pe people who are the most vulnerable and the most needy. Improving the welfare of women is one of the main reasons that I let Andrew run for president. <laughs> New Hampshire is not among the most diverse states, but organizers say that makes it all the more important to ensure the people that are here are not overlooked. We're here to raise the voices of women who are becoming such a powerhouse around the country. In Manchester, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. European markets open lower as coronavirus death toll rises. European markets opened lower Thursday, weighed on by a rising coronavirus death toll in reacting to the U.S. Federal Reserve's decision to keep interest rates on hold. At least 11 injured, including Baby in High Rise Blaze. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Terrifying series of rescues unfolding in Los Angeles. A raging high rise fire, families, tenants trapped, several injuries, including a three month old baby. This fire at a 25-story building, people escaping down smoky stairways, one man clinging to a ledge right there with flames burning just a few feet away. Helicopters could not land on the roof, so they conducted their rescues from the air, hovering over that roof. Officials say the building had no sprinklers, and ABC's Kena Whitworth is on the scene in Los Angeles. Tonight, flames engulfing an apartment building in the middle of rush hour in Los Angeles. A man desperately climbing out the window, clinging to the side of the burning high rise. Flames just feet away, the heat blowing out the windows. The man inching his way closer to firefighters. You tell that person not to jump, you tell them not to jump. Firefighters setting up an airbag below before using an aerial ladder, finally rescuing the man. Yeah. 
This fire is clearly just getting started in this building. It started on the sixth floor of this 25-story residential building, rapidly spreading to other floors. Smoke and flames forcing firefighters to crawl on the ground. Actually crawling through using flashlights to see. Um, and they actually, some of them even went through an entire air bottle before they even got to the unit. Someone banged on the door. They're like, we got to get out. Hundreds escaping down crowded stairwells. I got up and I looked out and I saw there's flames. Things are falling glass, flames on my balcony. At least 11 injured, including a three-month-old baby. You can see the helicopter there right on top of the building. They're actually trying to pluck the terrified residents off the roof. Fire one's in the process of lowering the medics down now. L.A. fire choppers unable to land on the roof, hoisting 15 people to safety. Officials calling the fire suspicious. Did the sprinkler system help you in this fight? There is no sprinkler system in this uh, occupancy. There's no sprinklers in the building. No, and there wasn't a single noise. If people hadn't run down the hallway and you hadn't heard that, everybody would have still been asleep. It's an incredible scene, Kana. We know officials have called this fire suspicious tonight. And word that there were no sprinkler system, that got a lot of attention today. Yeah, David, so there are some investigators on scene right here behind me. This building was built in 1961, and at that time, sprinklers were not a requirement. But residents I spoke with credit the quick response from firefighters who had just knocked down a fire three blocks away before rushing here and likely saving lives. David? All right, Kena Whitworth on the scene tonight. Kena, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.